Our next focus for the course is going to move into the math we can do involving transmissions or differentials. So we'll be talking about gears and gear ratios and how we can uh, figure stuff out mathematically about those things in our cars. When we take a pair of gears, uh, we can put them in mesh or we can attach them. Even pulleys will work this, attach them with a belt or a chain between two gears. And when we attach them or mesh them, what we're doing is we're making it so that we can transmit power from one gear to the next. So we have an input power that we can transmit to another gear. And by manipulating the gear ratio, the ratio of the relative sizes of the gears, we can change the torque. We can change the speed of the gear and therefore the speed of an output shaft that is attached to the driven gear. So a little bit of terminology, when you look at a gear pair, one gear will be providing the power. So let's say it's like a crank gear at the end of your crankshaft, which is being spun by the power of your engine. That would be the input gear to whatever it is attached to. Um, it's often called the driver, but I find it hard to uh, keep driver and driven separate. So I usually stick with input and output for everything, especially because we talk about output torque and output speed. So I'm talking about input gear and <laughs> output gear. So the one that provides the power, the driver, is the input. And the one that receives the power um, is the output gear. The size of the gears doesn't matter. You can drive, like what we see in this picture, a small gear driving a larger gear. Or you can reverse it. And I assume that small gear was driving the larger gear. I had no actual knowledge. It just is a way that uh, makes sense to me. But perhaps in that picture, the large gear is the one actually driving the smaller gear. Either situation is totally fine. So we're going to roll down the presentation here a little bit to look at our next piece of information. Uh, so I'll stop here. And we've got a little bit of an animation here. We've got a small gear in mesh with a large gear. And we can see the small gear has much fewer teeth. Um, we can see that the small gear is turning clockwise and the large gear is turning counterclockwise. And a little bit harder to see, but the small gear is actually spinning faster than the large gear. Okay. And this all has to do with the gear ratio. So when we make a gear ratio, we're always going to express a gear ratio as driven to driver. And we're going to reduce the gear ratio to be number to one or decimal to one. Okay. Um, that's also the same as saying output to input. So your input gear, no matter whether it's the larger or the smaller gear, the gear that provides a power is at the, it's the second number in the ratio or the bottom number if you express the ratio as a fraction. How can I find the gear ratio? So the easiest thing to do is you can find it from any comparison of any input output in a gear pair, but the easiest thing to do is compare gear sizes. So you could look at the diameter of the gears at the radius of the gears or the circumference. But the easiest thing to do often, usually, not always, is just count the number of teeth on your two gears. And that will also give you the gear ratio. Rolling down to a stack. Okay, so here we have two gears and I've decided the one on the left is the input gear. I'm gonna scroll back a bit. And I've decided the one on the right is the output gear. So if I want to find a gear ratio, the first thing I'm going to do is count the teeth. <laughs> and you'll notice that I put a little dot because sometimes counting teeth is a pain in the butt. So I see in this situation, my input gear has 20 teeth and my output gear has 30 teeth. So we need to remember what we said about gear ratio. Gear ratio is output to input. So the gear ratio in this situation is going to be 30 to 20. So that's a valid ratio, but I want to express it as number to one. So I'm going to reduce that ratio. You can divide 30 by 20. That will give you the gear ratio, or you can set it up with the magic banana ratio solver <laughs> that I love. So if I have 30 over 20 is my counted gear teeth, and I want to know what that is to one, here's the setup. Put in a ratio, put your unknown as X, um, the two numbers that are kitty corner get to be in the magic banana. The highlighted ones, they get to multiply and the leftover, the loser, is the divider. Just a very quick way to cheat cross multiplication.
when you're working with one, it's kind of unnecessary, but it, you know, if you get confused, it'll keep you straight. So we're gonna get X when we solve that, 30 times one divided by 20 is 1.5. So for these two gears in mesh, the gear ratio is 1.5 to one. Now let's change it up, what's different? I made the big gear, the 30 tooth gear, my input and the gear on the left is now my output. So my gear ratio changes because it's still output to input and now it becomes 20 to 30, which is a little different, but I still want to have it expressed as something to one. So how am I gonna do that? Set up the ratio again. This time my output is 20, my input is 30. So I set that up as a fraction on the left and then I make it equal to X over one. Magic banana, 20 times one and the left over 30 is a divider. 20 times one divided by 30 is 0.6 continuing, which I'm gonna to round to 0.67. So the gear ratio in my second scenario is 0.67 to one. So having a decimal, not a whole number doesn't matter. Obviously both of these had a decimal. You just wanna make it something to one. I just quickly wanna talk about what we observed there. When we had a small gear driving a big gear, that's called a gear reduction situation. So small driving large is always going to give you a gear ratio where the number to one is going to be bigger. So the number on the left, the X, the unknown, the gear ratio will be a number greater than one. It could be 1.5 like we just saw. It could be 30 to one. Those are fine. Those are all gear reduction situations where a small gear is driving a large gear. If we have a bigger gear driving a smaller gear, you're always going to get a gear ratio that is less than one. So you could have 0.5 to one, you could have 0.25 to one, you could have what we had, 0.67 to one. So if the gears are in that situation, you've got an overdrive, what we call an overdrive situation, which is what we have when highway speeds, right? We like overdrive. Um, and if you had two gears of the same size, what would the gear ratio be? Just one to one. So now we're gonna head over to the whiteboard and solve these two practice questions I've listed here. So here we are back on more familiar territory for me where we're going to look at those two practice questions. So starting with the small box question, find the gear ratio of a set that has a 12 tooth gear driving a 37 tooth gear. So we have the 12 tooth is driving, so that is the input. And this is the output or the driven. So we know that gear ratio is the output over the input. So I'm gonna set that up the usual way. I have 37 on my output, 12 on my input, and that's just a count of teeth, and I wanna know what the gear ratio is. Magic banana, if there are two numbers kitty corner, they get to be the multipliers. So X is going to be equal to 37 times one divided by 12, and x is equal to 3.08 and change. I'm gonna round it, and then I'm gonna put that to one to make it the gear ratio. So there's my answer right there. Shoop. All right, let's look at the second one. So I've been given a gear ratio, 0.8 to one. It's overdrive. I know that because this is a number less than one. The input gear has 20 teeth. How many teeth does a driven gear have? Okay, if you're in overdrive, what do you expect? Will the output gear have more or less teeth than the input gear? Remember that overdrive means a large gear, gear is driving a smaller gear. So I'm expecting to see a number less than 20 when I do this math. Set up the ratio. There's my gear ratio. And I know that my input has 20, so it goes on the bottom my unknown is on the top. Magic banana setup. X is going to be equal to, oops, switch colors, 20 times 0.8 divided by one. Do that math, X equals 16. So the driven gear, the output gear has 16 teeth. Once we've gotten the gear ratio, usually found from comparing the input output num gear size by counting the, the number of teeth, we can use that to find output or input speed, torque, number of rev rotations or revolutions. 
So when you think about a small gear with the big gear, they turn faster, right? Because they have to complete more revolutions <laughs> as that big gear moves more slowly and completes less revolutions. And then a small gear also provides less torque than a large gear. And that makes sense because if you think about the torque formula, force equal force times distance, torque equals force times distance. If you increase a distance, you're increasing the radius on a gear, right? Between the uh, center pivot point and the rim of the gear where you apply that force. So you are gonna create a situation where the bigger the gear, the more torque. So we're gonna take this gear ratio and looking on the left there, all three things are our gear ratio, output teeth over input teeth. And we can use that to figure out torque, speed, and revolutions. Notice that torque is like gear ratio, output over input, but speed and revolutions are inversely proportional. It's input over output. This is on your formula sheet. Just make sure you uh, don't miss that. So scanning down, let's go back to those two situations we had, back to the whiteboard and solve these two problems. Okay, so let's go back to that first situation. We already figured out the gear ratio here. Output over input, number of teeth or gear size, 30 over 20, and we figured out that was 1.5 to one. So we're gonna use that to find all these other missing values like an output speed. So let's think about it. We know that the gear ratio is equal when we're talking about speed, input speed over output speed. Input speed is 20, 300. Output speed is what we're solving for. Magic banana, 2300 times one divided by 1.5. And that will give me 1533. Does that make sense? Yeah, your bigger gear should be driving more slowly or turning more slowly than your smaller gear. All right, let's look at revolutions. How do we set that up? Gear ratio. For revolutions, it is the same as speed. We are talking about input over output. So our output is 42, our unknown is the input. Same thing. You're going to get to x equals 42 times 1.5, which is 63. Does that make sense? Yes, a smaller gear should spin more faster, spin more <laughs> than a, a bigger gear. And looking finally at the torque, same thing, set up your gear ratio, look to your formula sheet or your use your common sense. Okay, for torque, we know that the output is divided by the input. Okay, so we're going to put the input on the bottom for this. Our output torque is what we want to solve for. There's our magic banana. X is going to be equal to 250 times 1.5. And we would divide that by one, which is an unnecessary. So we're gonna get 375, 375 foot pounds. Looking again, yep, larger gears have more torque. Second situation was when we switch the output and the input. So our large gear is now the input. Our gear ratio is 20 to 30, which we reduced already to 0.67 to one. That's the only thing that changes. All of our values that were given and our unknowns are in the same place. So a little more quickly this time, solving for speed, 0 0.67 over one is still equal to input over output you're gonna end up doing 2300 divided by 0.67, and you're gonna get the missing speed is 3433 RPM. Setting up the same thing for the number of revolutions or rotations. We have the output, we're looking for the input. Rotations is input over output, that's how you set up the fraction. And you're gonna end up finding X is equal to about 28. 0.67 times 42. Last situation, the torque, the gear ratio, is equal to output over input. So our unknown goes on the top. 
and then our x is going to be simply 250 times 0.67, which will give me 167.5 foot-pounds. If you're unsure whether you did the right ratio setup, take a look at your situation. I have a big gear driving a small gear, an overdrive situation. My big gear should spin more slowly, so input. I'm going to write big and small, and it does. Okay, my big gear should do less revolutions than my small gear, and it does. However, there should be more torque at my big gear than there is at my small gear, and that is true as well. We've been looking exclusively at gear pairs, but in reality, <laughs> we can have something called a gear train, which is a bunch of gears in a row, maybe like this situation, three, A, B, and C, Maybe you've got A through J, you've got 10 gears. So we need to be able to determine the overall gear ratio, given our input gear might be quite far away from our output gear. So let's take a look at this picture. We've got 20 teeth. We're going to call that the driver. 20 teeth driving 60 teeth, which is in turn driving 10 teeth. And let's figure out on the whiteboard that overall gear ratio. Here we are again. Okay, so I'm going to ignore the uh, revolutions for now, the speed, um, but I am going to write down that this is my input and this is my output. A drives B drives C. Notice the direction. They're turning A and C turn in the same direction this time because B is like reversing the direction. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go from A to B and we're going to find out the gear ratio between A and B. Gear ratio is output over input, 60 over 20. You can do some math to figure that out, or you're going to get eventually to 3 to 1. I'm kind of blown by the things. Now let's look at our second location between B and C. We've got an output of 10 teeth, an input of 60 teeth. So <laughs> our gear ratio for now, I'm it's going to be 1 over 6, right? So just kind of, I'm going to leave this as a fraction actually because I don't like where it's going with the, the decimal. So I'm going to leave the gear ratio as 1 over 6 to 1. It'll work out no matter what we do. Okay, so, and I'll put this one as 3 to 1. If you want to find an overall gear ratio, and we'll use this again with compound gears, you are going to multiply all the individual gear ratios you get from meshing locations. So I need to take the 3 from the AB pair and I need to multiply it by the 1 over 6 from the BC pair. When you do that you're going to get 3 over 6. So revisiting our fraction math which is the same as 1 half and at this point I don't care if you go to a decimal so I have an overall gear ratio of 1 half to 1 or 0 0.5 to 1. So what do I know about the output speed or the output torque here? Let's see, we gave me, you gave me 60 RPM as the, the input speed. I know the output speed will be double that, right? Because I've got a half to one ratio. So it'll be spinning twice as fast at C. What do I know about the torque? Say the torque was 100. I know that the output torque will be 50. It'll be half, I can use a math or just kind of use what I've learned and what I'm picking up more quickly. Now here's something interesting. We'll put it in a glitter box. There we go, awesome. What if I had just compared A to C, the number of teeth, the final output to the original input? Gear ratio is 10 over 20, and I'll do this one the long way, <laughs> which is what over 1. If I go ahead and do all that math, x is equal to 10 times 1 over 20, x is equal to 0 0.5, so the gear ratio is 0 0.5 to 1. Same answer. So you don't have to do all that work. You can just compare the start, the size of the starting gear, to the size of the final output gear. So now we figured out we can find the overall 
gear ratio of a gear train just by comparing the number of teeth on the output gear, final output gear to the original output gear. Um, so what is the point of the gears in the middle? Those are idlers. They're there to change that direction. So if I want A and C to be turning in the same direction, I put a gear B in so that I do the double flip and then A and C are both rotating clockwise. All right, so that's awesome. Now, unfortunately, that's not always true. Often we use what we call compound gear sets. Um, you'll have a shaft and instead of having a single gear on it, you might have two gears of different sizes on the same shaft. So therefore we don't get away <laughs> with just looking at the start and the finish because we're changing things on each shaft. So let's take a little quick scroll down to a picture. So let's say here we have three shafts moving from left to right. We're going to call the leftmost gear the driving gear. And you'll notice on, let's call them ABC, on shaft B, it is compound. Okay, so it has two gears. That is a compound gear. Sometimes they're right up against each other. Sometimes they're a little further along the shaft. Maybe like when we look at a standard transmission, but this is a classic compound gear set. So let's figure out some more math. So here is a situation, our last situation. We're going to go to the whiteboard with these two situations that are compound gear sets. One has a few, one has a few more, and we're going to figure out the gear ratio and some output torque and speed. All right, here we go. In this picture, I've labeled them the gears A, B, and C are compound on the same shaft, and D, and someone has been nice enough to put the number of teeth on each gear on the picture for me. So looking at the gear ratio, for A to B. Okay, we have 24 teeth on the output over 12 teeth on the input. That's gonna be a gear ratio of two to one. I'm kind of going quickly through this part because I feel like you already know how to do that. Now, the next place we have a mesh, we don't have to do B and C because they're not meshing with each other, they're on the same shaft. We need to look at the gear ratio when we are going from C to D. And that's going to be 18 over 12. We're going to do some math with that and figure out that that's 1.5 to 1. We're going to take these two numbers, 2 and 1.5, and they're going to make our overall gear ratio by using multiplication. So 2 times 1.5 gives me 3. Our overall gear ratio is 3 to 1 which is different that if I had just gone from A to D, I would have thought it would have been 18 divided by 12, which would have been 1.5. But because we did that drop down on into the second gear on the compound shaft, things are different now. Okay, the second part of the question was I gave you an input torque of 200 foot pounds. Oops. What will my output torque be? Well, you can set up the ratio Ultimately, what you're going to end up doing is this math, 600 foot-pounds. And then I know that the input speed is 1500. So likewise, if I wanted to find my output speed, you can set up the ratios. That's the safest way to do it. 1500. Oops, I don't know why there's brackets there. <laughs> 1500 divided by 3, which is going to give me 500 RPM. For this example, I want to make sure I can see where all the gears are in mesh. So I'm just going to run through with my highlighter first. So I see from the driver on the left, I have mesh having, oops, not my highlighter. There's my highlighter. Mesh happening here, mesh happening here, mesh happening here, which I'm going to switch to pink. There we go, and a mesh happening right here. So I have four things going into my overall gear ratio. Double checking, yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm gonna start by looking here and I'm gonna have to use a guide. You could do this with either the gear diameters which are provided or the teeth. I'm used to using the teeth, so I'm gonna stick with the teeth. My driven output is 24, the gray 
and my driver is eight, the red. That's a gear ratio of three to one. Coming right here, my output is 32. My input is eight, my driver, and that is a gear ratio of four to one. Coming to this crazy pink one, my output is 24, and my input is 16. I'm going to reduce that to 3 to 2, which is 1.5 to 1. And then in my last location, my output is 32, my input is 8, 4 to 1. All right. My overall gear ratio, 3 times 4 times 1.5 times 4. That's going to give me 72 to 1, deliver some massive torque. And remember we said our input torque is 200. So if you put in 200, what are you going to get out? 200 times 72, you're going to be at 14,400 foot-pounds, thanks to the gear reduction. All right, thinking about the input speed, that was 1,500 RPM. We're going to divide 1,500 by 72, and that's going to give me a solid 20.8 RPM, so very, very slow compared to the input speed of that driver gear.